Hello, my name is Melanie Charles, and I am a genetic counselor at Good Samaritan Hospital Medical Center. Today we will be discussing prenatal genetic counseling. There are a few reasons that a physician may recommend that you have a genetic consultation, and these include if you are a woman who is pregnant over the age of 35, if you happen to have a blood test during pregnancy that is positive and shows an increased risk to the pregnancy, if any ultrasound abnormalities are detected, if you have a previous child with or family history of any genetic disorder, any chromosome abnormalities or birth defects, if a couple has had multiple pregnancy losses, if there are any exposures during pregnancy, or if a couple is related by blood or of certain ancestries. During pregnancy, women will undergo serum screening, which is a blood test which analyzes certain proteins and hormones in the female's blood. When performed in the first trimester, this test will screen for trisomy 21, more commonly known as Down syndrome, and another chromosome abnormality called trisomy 18. During the second trimester, in addition to Down syndrome and trisomy 18, neural tube defects such as spina bifida will also be assessed. A newer type of serum screening test called non-invasive prenatal testing or cell-free DNA will analyze maternal blood for fetal DNA fragments. This test will screen the sample for Down syndrome, trisomy 18, trisomy 13, as well as any sex chromosome abnormalities. In addition, some labs may screen for additional chromosome problems called microdeletions and microduplications. Once again, this test does not screen for any neural tube defects. Typically, non-invasive prenatal testing will be offered to women who are considered at high risk. Being of high risk means if you are pregnant and over the age of 35, if you have a positive first or second trimester screened result, if any ultrasound abnormalities have been detected, if one has a previous child with a chromosome abnormality, or if a patient or her partner has a rearrangement of their chromosomes called a translocation. In addition, some states are currently offering non-invasive prenatal testing to low-risk patients, but that's something that you would have to discuss with your physician. In addition to serum screening, women have the option to pursue diagnostic testing. Chorionic villi sampling is a procedure performed in the first trimester typically between 11 and 14 weeks of gestation. During this procedure, the chorionic villi will be removed from the placenta. The amniocentesis is another procedure that is offered during the second trimester, typically between 16 and 22 weeks. With this test, the amniotic fluid is removed from the uterus. Both of these diagnostic tests will analyze fetal chromosomes, resulting in a picture called a karyotype. A normal karyotype will look like this, with a total of 46 chromosomes and two X chromosomes if it is a female and an X and a Y chromosome if it is a male. Karyotypes can reveal certain chromosome abnormalities such as Down syndrome when an individual will have a total of 47 chromosomes with an extra copy of chromosome 21. Other common chromosomal abnormalities that karyotyping can detect include trisomy 18, where there is an extra copy of chromosome 18, trisomy 13, where there is an extra copy of chromosome 13, Turner syndrome, where there is only one X chromosome instead of two, triploidy, where there is an extra entire set of chromosomes, and any additional rearrangements or translocations that an individual may have. There can be risk associated with both of these diagnostic procedures, including leakage of amniotic fluid, infection, and miscarriage. These risks tend to be small, however, they are site-specific. Ultrasounds are another screening tool that can be used during pregnancy. They can detect approximately 50 to 60% of fetal abnormalities. While they can detect many fetal defects, not all physical anomalies can be seen. And this is important as many fetal anomalies can be associated with certain genetic syndromes or chromosome abnormalities. Carrier screening is a test that can be performed before or during pregnancy. This test will determine if an individual carries one abnormal gene for a specific disease. Individuals with one abnormal gene are not affected with the disease. However, their children may be at risk for developing the disease. 
When screening for an autosomal recessive condition, a patient and her partner must be a carrier of the same condition in order for there to be a risk to a pregnancy. Common conditions that have an autosomal recessive inheritance include cystic fibrosis, spinal muscular atrophy, and hemoglobinopathies, for example, sickle cell disease. With disorders that have an X-linked inheritance, only the woman is required to be a carrier in order for there to be a risk to the pregnancy. Disorders that have this type of inheritance include fragile X syndrome and Duchenne's muscular dystrophy. Some labs are currently offering a panel test where an individual can be tested for a large number of diseases at one time. This panel can include disorders that can be commonly seen in different ethnic backgrounds. They include Tay-Sachs, which is predominantly seen in the Ashkenazi Jewish population, cystic fibrosis, which can be usually seen in Caucasians, and any abnormalities of the beta globin gene, including beta thalassemia or sickle cell disease, which can predominantly be seen in the African American and Caucasian populations. Thank you for your time, and feel free to give us a call if you have any questions.